Today we're looking at P.3, so that's the prerequisite chapter again out of our orange book. Third section, one more time. And in our second day, we're continuing to work with linear equations. And so this is a summary of all the equations we saw last time in the different forms, right? So here's your general form, there's your slope intercept form, and the point slope form. So we used these a lot yesterday. They'll come up again today as well but we'll dip into these others a few times too. I'm just throwing on here your uh, slope formula in case you needed that information. We typically don't really use this last one here. It's more of an advanced concept where you, just with two points, you can plug in all the values and just kind of work from there without even needing the slope. But really what's happening is the M is being replaced with the slope formula, right? So that slope formula is what you're seeing right there. Normally we just do that as a two-step process, calculate the slope on the side, and then we plug in that result right here in place of M. But you could technically just drop the formula in. You won't see me do that on the examples here, but there it is for your reference in case you're ambitious. So example number one here is a review from yesterday, and then we'll get to some of the new material below that. So let's review how to do the general form, and we are given a point and a slope, so I'm going to use point slope form. So this is what I'm looking at right here. The x sub 1 and the y sub 1 are referring to the coordinates of the given point. So setting this up, we have y minus the y coordinate of negative 2 equals the slope times the quantity of x minus the x coordinate of 1. If we had a fraction here, we would have to get rid of the fraction first. And we'll see some examples of that a little later on. But for now, we're going to distribute that 3. And then for our general form, we want all the terms on the same side. And the leading term has to be positive. So I already have a positive 3 on my x, so we're going to bring everything over to the right-hand side. So 3x minus y minus 5, there's our final result. So in taking a look at example two now, what we're doing is we're looking at more of a story problem, saying how do we take the given information and set it up as a series of given points. Normally the points we have are just representing an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. We have our ordered pair. But what if we have instead something else? Millions of dollars, for example, in a certain time frame. How do we set that up? So this one says during the first two quarters of the year, a company had total sales of 3.4 million and 3.7 million. What we want to do is we want to set that information up as ordered pairs. So we're provided this time frame, which are the quarters of the year, and then here we have the sales as the output. So companies will often measure their profits in quarters. So the first quarter is the first three months, the second quarter would be the next three months, so instead of just comparing month to month, they also compare quarter to quarter. And that gives them a, a bigger timeline to work with. What this pattern then tells us is that in the first two quarters, so we need a quarter number one, and we need a quarter number two. So those will be the x coordinates for our ordered pairs. In quarter number one, we had 3.4, and that's in millions of dollars, of course. And in quarter number two, we had 3.7. So now that we have an ordered pair, we could proceed normally. We want to write a linear equation giving the total sales. So notice we do have the sales in the location of the y-coordinate in terms of the quarter x. Yeah, so we do have the quarter in the x-coordinate position. So we set that up correctly. Write a linear equation. It doesn't say what form we need to write it in, so we could write it in any form. But let's leave where we're going. We want to use that equation to predict or to, to, to calculate a certain amount of sales. So what that means is I want to have an output. I want to get the result in sales. And that means we don't want general form because that doesn't give me an output. It would be much better to use our slope intercept form because there's the output. We can plug in the input, the quarter that we want, and out comes the answer. So let's use slope intercept form for part A. All right, so I need my slope. Here's y's over x's. 3.7 minus the 3.4 over the 2 minus 1. And my calculator gives me 0.3 as a result. Now I have a point. Where's my point? I have two points. I have a point and I have a slope. So I'm going to start with point slope form. 
and we'll convert that into the slope intercept form that we need for part b. So I'm using this first point here. y minus the y coordinate of 3.4 equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate of 1. So in order to convert this to the slope intercept form, we want y by itself. So we'll distribute the point 3 and then we'll move the constant term over. So we have point 3x minus point 3 on the right hand side. And now we're adding the 3.4 to both sides so we can get y by itself. And that gives us a result of positive 3.1. So this is the formula that I'm going to use for part b because we can plug in however many quarters we want and this will give us the output which is exactly what we need to predict or to calculate the total sales during the fourth quarter. All right, so that means our input is four. So here's the fourth quarter that we're plugging in for x, and my calculator will give me a result of 4.3. So because this is a story problem, bring your units back in. We're measuring it in dollars, and this is in millions. So there we go. So we are using this y um, equals mx plus b pattern, the slope intercept form, most often when we graph, and of course we're not graphing here, but that's a really handy form for graphing. And it's also a really handy form for story problems when it says, at what time do I get such and such an output or such and such a result? That's when you want to use this. For other occasions, like example three, when you don't have a story problem, then we don't really have to use this form. We're not locked into that. Other forms, here they're asking for a general form, are what we're going to be using instead. Now in example three, this is where we are doing the comparison of two lines. We want to know both an equation for a parallel line as well as an equation for a perpendicular line compared to the given line. So this is my given line. And so we want to find a new line that's parallel to that. We want to find a new line that is perpendicular to that. And both of these new lines have to pass through this point at 4 comma negative 2. And then we'll put our answer in general form. So there's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the traditional way here with example 3. And then we'll look at the pattern and find a shortcut that we can use that we'll use for example number 4. So the traditional way is to first find the slope because we know that parallel lines have to have the same slope. So my new line needs a slope that matches the old line. So what is the slope on my old line? So that's what we're going to do first. To find the slope, we want to turn it back into this slope intercept form because the slope is right there as a multiplier to the input. So take this 4x plus 3y equals 8, and let's work to solve for y. I'm subtracting 4x from both sides, dividing away the 3, and we have a negative 4 thirds x plus 8 thirds. All we need is the slope. That's my slope. And so we need our new equation to have the exact same slope. And my new equation has to go through this point. So look at what we have. We have a point. We have a slope. Let's use point slope form in setting this up. So y minus the y coordinate of negative 2 equals the slope negative four-thirds times x minus the x coordinate. So that's the setup and we're going to work it to turn it into general form. We don't have any fractions in general form. We're not allowed to have that denominator of three. So let's start by multiplying both sides by three. So on the right hand side, three and divided by three cancel out. I'll do my, my distribution on the next step. I'm just writing down the factor pairs on both sides. So I cleaned up the y minus the negative 2, so we have a y plus 2 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, notice you still have that numerator of negative 4 that's still here. We'll be distributing that now. So 3 times y and then 3 times 2 gives us the left-hand side. Negative 4 times x and negative 4 times negative 4 gives us the right-hand side. Again, we want general form, so that means bring all the terms to the left so that we can have a positive leading coefficient. So now we have a positive 4x and a positive 3y. We're moving the constant terms as well, so we're subtracting 10, 16 from both sides, and that results in a negative 10. And that equals 
zero. So there's the final result that we want. So now let's talk about how do we find the equation of a line that is perpendicular to the given line. So here's the given line and here's the given slope. So I want a perpendicular slope. So that's my symbol from geometry, okay? That's the perpendicular symbol. Remember, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. That means change the sign and flip the fraction. So opposite in sign and reciprocal means the fraction is upside down. So now we're using this new slope in combination with the original point again. So we have a point, we have a slope. We're using point slope form again. So y minus the y coordinate of negative two equals the slope of positive three fourths times x minus the x coordinate of four. Once again, we're not allowed to have fractions in our general form, so let's get rid of that denominator of four by multiplying both sides by four. And uh, so the four and the divided by four cancels out on the right hand side. So we have four times the y plus two, and that equals three times the x minus four. So let me continue in my next column over here. With the distribution, we have four y plus eight equals three x minus 12. So x is currently positive, so let's bring everything over to the right hand side. So we have three x minus four y minus 20, and there's the answer. So that's the traditional method. The traditional method is first you find the slope, then you use the new slope with the given point to create the equation of a line. But it turns out that there's some patterns here that will lead us to a shortcut. And we'll use the next example to demonstrate the shortcut. But take a look at what you see here with the original line and the new line. Let's start off with part A in the parallel section. Parallel lines have the same slope. The same slope means that you end up with the same coefficients in your answer, right? You have a 4x in the original problem, you have a 4x in your answer. You have a 3y in the original equation, you have a 3y here as well. The only thing that changes is the constant term changes. So the shortcut here is to keep these numbers the same, and all we have to do is calculate the new constant term. Let's do that in the next example. So example four, top of the next page. What we're looking at here is this is the given line, 2x minus 3y equals 5. We're given the point, and we want to find it in general form. So how do we do that with this shortcut? If I want a parallel line, that means it has to have the same slope. The same slope means it will have the same values as what you see right here. So start off with 2x minus 3y. Because in my final answer, these two terms will be the same as those two terms. What we're doing is we're throwing out the 5 and replacing it with my variable. C for the constant term. That's what I want to figure out. I need to find my new constant term. To do that, we're going to take the values from the point that they give us, because that's an x-coordinate and that's a y-coordinate, and we're going to plug it in for x and y. So here's 2 times the x-coordinate, the x-coordinate is 2, minus 3 times the y-coordinate, the y-coordinate is negative 1. All of that will equal my new constant term. So 4 plus 3 results in 7 for my new constant term. That means I have 2x minus 3y equals 7. That was a lot faster than the traditional method. Now we're not quite done. We want general forms. Let's bring the constant term to the same side. So 2x minus 3y minus 7 equals 0. That's how we'll format the answer. So notice that you have 2x and 2x. You have minus 3y and minus 3y. So that's the pattern for parallel lines. Those numbers stay the same. But what about perpendicular lines? What's the pattern here? So let's go back to the previous example, number three, part B, and let's look to see what we have here. In the given line, you have a 4x, but now in the answer, the 4 is on the y. You have a 3y, but now the 3 is on the x. So what we see here is that the numbers have flip-flopped places. Also, we used to have a positive sign in the middle, now it's a negative sign in the middle. That happens because when we change the slopes, we change the signs here from negative to positive. That means in my equations, you'll see that these signs change from one to the other. 
And then we flip the fraction upside down. And when you flip the fraction upside down, that means those coefficients are flip-flopping places. So for a perpendicular line, exchange the coefficients and then change the sign in the middle. Let's see how that works with example four. All right, so I want a perpendicular line. Here is the existing line. I want a new line, but we have to flip-flop those coefficients. So instead of a two in the front, we want the three in the front. So it's three X, and you put the two with the Y and two Y. Then you have to change the sign in the middle. So it goes from a minus sign to a plus sign. That's the pattern. And again, we have to find the constant term. So we'll take the given point and plug in that x and y coordinate right here. So it's 3 times 2 plus 2 times a negative 1. That'll result in a 4. So 3x plus 2y equals 4. There's my equation, but let's bring the constant term to the left so we have it in general form. And there's the final format. So you can do it either way. I'm giving you the option in our homework assignment. If you want to do it the more traditional way, the way you see in example three, that's fine. If you want to do it this new way in example four, because it makes sense to you, that's fine. Go ahead. But you can pick whichever method you want. We'll do examples five and six here. We're going to skip number seven at the bottom of the page. Number five, we're still talking about finding a parallel and a perpendicular line. However, the twist with this problem is that our equation looks very unusual. It doesn't look like a normal equation. It's just x equals negative two. So we're given the line of x equals negative two and we're given this point of five comma negative four. Find the general form of the equation. So do you recognize what kind of a line that is? You're only seeing an x. Yesterday we talked about this phrase of Vux Hoy. It's a way to remember when you have a vertical and when you have a horizontal line. The vertical line has undefined slope and its equation is only x. That's exactly what we're seeing right here. I only see the x. So that means we have a vertical line. So if I were to sketch this out as a picture, here's my x and y axis, a few tick marks on there for scale. What we have here with x equals negative 2 is a vertical line that goes through negative 2 on the x axis. That's the given line. Well, that means if I want a parallel line, my new line must also be vertical. So, how do you write the equation of a vertical line? You only use x. Okay, so what does x equal? Well, take a look at your coordinate point. It has to go through this point, and my x has a value of 5. So, x equals 5. And that's really all there is to it. There's no calculation here. Now they do want it in general form, so technically bring everything to the same side. So x minus 5 equals 0 is the format that we're looking for. Now what about a perpendicular line? What's perpendicular to a vertical line? Well, that would be a horizontal line. So how do you write the equation of a horizontal line? You use only y. So y equals something. There's the coordinate that we have to pass through, so we have to use the negative 4. And that's it. Bring everything over to the same side so we can get the general form and then we're done. So notice with vertical and horizontal lines, you just have to think about how to write the equations in that vertical and horizontal pattern. Lastly, we'll do number six. Here, think of this more as a you try. So pause the video, see if you can write a new equation that is perpendicular to the given line and passes through this point. So we have this decimal value here. So you can either pick the traditional method from example three, or you can pick the new method from example four. I'm gonna pause the video and take some time to fill out the answer. So when you turn this back on, it should be ready to view. But see if you can pause and try it yourself. All right, continuing on. So I'm using the shortcut, the method that we saw in example four, where I'm changing the coefficients around, and then changing the sign in the middle. That's our setup. Let's find the constant term. I'm plugging in the x and the y coordinates in here, and my calculator helps me get a decimal value. So that's what our equation looks like. 
Now, in this particular problem, it doesn't say what form to write the answer in. So I want to write it in general form. And notice what we have to do with a decimal, right? We're not allowed to have a decimal when we're in general form. I know it doesn't say you have to use general form, but follow me through with this. How do we get rid of a decimal if I can only use integers? I would really like the decimal to be right here. So that's one decimal place to the right. What do I need to multiply by to move the decimal one spot? And the answer is we have to multiply both sides by 10. So you multiply both sides by 10, distributing the 10 on the left, multiply the right side by 10, and that turns into an integer of six. Now we don't have any decimals, we don't have any fractions. Bring the constant term to the left-hand side, and there's your general form. Or, because all of these values are even, I'm thinking, hey, we could factor out a two. We could divide away a two from both sides. You could even find it in this way. So if you use the traditional method, this is the problem. Uh, this is the answer that you would find for that problem, but technically they are the same equation, so either one works. That's it for today. We're skipping example seven.